I'm pleased to introduce our presenter today, Jevin Boyer. As a certified financial coach with California, California Coast Credit Union, Jevin has a unique set of tools to, under, to help us understand how we think, feel, and react to money and financial circumstances. Jevin has over 20 years of experience in the financial industry and loves to empower his clients through education. And with that, Jevin, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Will. And thank you everyone for joining us for our first webinar of 2023, starting the new year off right with budget planning. So whether you're trying to get a better grip on your finances, boost your savings, or simply have a better understanding of what is happening with my money, there's no better tool than a budget. And I can tell you the insights I gained from keeping a budget were invaluable. But for some of us, the word budget makes us feel kind of uncomfortable. I don't like to use the word budget the same way I don't like to use the word diet. It feels restrictive. It's being told you can't go do something or you shouldn't go out to dinner, or go to the movies, or you shouldn't go on vacation. I like to use the word plan. A plan puts me in control. I'm using my earned income to help me create the future that I want. A plan is powerful, deliberate, and strong. And right now is my favorite time to create my plan because we have so much information at in our fingertips when it comes to the past year's expenses. It's the time of year when we set our goals and vow to become the best versions of ourselves. But in all that excitement to become the, the best version and improve ourselves, we make mistakes in our planning. And I wanna talk to you about six common budgeting mistakes that I see every day and how we can overcome those. So here are the six common mistakes. So I've been in the financial industry, like Will said, for over 20 years. And I see these mistakes repeated over and over. <clears throat> these mistakes are often missed because they're not the flashy parts of the plan. They don't focus on the reward. They are created, these are the understated truths that will cause plans even created with the best intentions to fail if we don't find ways to overcome those. So I'd like to spend a few minutes today <clears throat> giving you some tips, some tools, and, and what I've learned to help overcome some of these, these pitfalls and give you a successful plan for 2023. So number one, not having a written plan. Number two, not recognizing our spending and financial habits. Number three is not setting realistic expectations. We all want things to happen quickly and have our money problems go away as fast as we can. Number four, underestimating our expenses and maintenance costs. Common mistake number five is not planning for occasional expenses. These are the ones that only happen every so often. So we typically don't prepare for them. And this is where we find most of our credit card debt come in. And the last one, number six, lack of communication. This is a life-changing skill when it comes to finances, and I want to save it for last. So you'll notice the very first mistake on this list is not having a written plan. So let's get started there. I'm going to tell you a story I read about a study. There was about 250 participants that were split into three groups. And the idea of the study was to understand what pe keeps people committed to their exercise routines. Participants in all three groups were given one simple task, exercise at least twice a week. The first group was then dismissed and groups two and three were led into a room where they were provided all sorts of benefits of exercise, how it maintains a healthy heart and provides energy and clarity for the mind. Then the second group was dismissed. The third group was asked to do one additional task. Before the week began, they were asked to write down the time and location in which they were going to complete their exercises. Essentially, they would have a written plan for their exercise. Well, after two weeks, as you might expect, only 35% of that first group had completed two workouts each week. Interestingly, even being given the knowledge and benefits of exercise, the second group only scored slightly better, about 38%. But remarkably, the third group who wrote down the exact time and location of the workout report an astonishing 91% of participants that completed the task of exercising at least twice a week. 
I cannot encourage you strongly enough. If you don't have a written plan for your finances this year, motivation and good intentions will only get you so far. So some people say, I don't know where to start. Well, California Coast has a team of certified financial coaches to help show you how to create and follow a financial plan. Give us a call. It's absolutely a free service we provide as benefit of membership. And the first assignment I always give anyone I, I speak with is we need to track all your expenses for 30 days. Uh, another challenge I hear is I make enough money. I don't need a, a plan. I don't need goals. That might be true now, but maybe that situation won't be there forever. If you don't have three to six months worth of savings, we've all seen what happens in the last few years. Our lives were, were changed forever. And can we honestly say, if we don't have that money in our savings, we, we're not comfortable. We're coasting. But it's time to sit down, set up our plans, and see our future. Some people tell me, oh, I'm just too busy. I hear this one a lot, and I get that. But we make time for the things that are priorities. Imagine if you said, oh, I'm too busy to buy gas for my car. You wouldn't get very far. <laughs> so another one I hear is not sticking to the plan. They say, oh, I've, I've had one in the past. I've tried this before. It didn't work. Uh, it, it, it didn't work out for me. We need to find a plan that works for us. And again, when I meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, the same plan isn't going to work for everybody. You may have heard of the zero-based budget. That's where you start with zero at every month, at the beginning of every month, and you give each dollar a job. Or maybe you've heard of the 50, 30, 20 budget, where you spend 50% of your income on needs, 30% on wants, and 20% on savings. These are simply guidelines. Maybe you live in an area that has a high cost of living, and you need to be higher than that 50%. You need to find the plan that works for you. Maybe you're lucky enough to live with your parents and your needs are, expenses are not as high and you're allow, you're be able to contribute more to your savings or investment or retirement. But we need to have a written plan and we need to find one that works for us. <clears throat> so how to overcome not having a written plan? Well, first know your resources. Like I said, California Coast as a member, as a benefit of membership, we have a team that will meet with you as often as you like, and it's always free to talk to us. Having a plan will help you articulate and define your goals. Having a written plan is so powerful. It allows you to see your financial picture as a whole, and it also allows you to see things that you might otherwise miss. It creates this natural to-do list that you can take pride in crossing out those items on your list. The last thing is to schedule the right time and the right place. Consistency matters. So I do this for my budget and every two weeks on payday is when I take about 15 minutes and I just review my budget. I review the income, I review the bills that I need to pay and I review the things that I want to accomplish. It takes me no longer than it would to fill up my gas tank. <clears throat> the next challenge we talked about is not being aware of our spending. And why is this? Uh, you know, we have habits. Maybe we have a habit where we stop for breakfast every morning um, or we stop for coffee in the morning every every day. These are habits we, we tend not to think about after a while. Maybe we're struggling with some addictions, shopping, gambling, drinking. If we can't say no to these things, we can't stop spending on these things. Image is a big one. Uh, keeping up with Joneses, keeping up with, with friends and family. We just went through Christmas and I know so maybe some family members aren't able to spend as much on, on the gifts and the holidays and the things they want to do. And other members can spend that kind of money and we're trying to keep up. Guilt is another one. Um, I see this sometimes. I, I work with parents and they'll, they'll say, oh, I feel so bad. I, I miss my child's soccer game or dance recital. So they go out and spend this you know, expensive gift. They get them the gift because they're feeling guilty about it. And communication. Again, it's going to go back to communication. If you're not communicating with your friends and your family members and even your partner who you might share a bank account with of exactly what you're spending and why, things can fall apart very, very quickly. So how can we overcome these challenges of not being aware of our spending? It's all about tracking. Again, I tell you for the first 30 days, when you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna ask you to track every single expense you had for one month. 
whether you like to use old fashioned paper and pencil, keep a check register, or prefer using an apps or online resources, there's so many great tools and calculators out there to keep track of your spending. One thing I would definitely encourage you to do is keep all your receipts in one place. And here's why. What can you buy at Costco, Target, Amazon? If you're sitting here watching, you say, I can buy everything. You're right. When you're trying to find out, figure out where you're spending your money at, whether it's groceries or clothes or medicine, or if it's wants like entertainment, a new book or toy for kids, all those things you can buy at those big stores that we shop at all the time. So it makes it very difficult to understand our spending if we are not keeping our receipts and breaking it down. You'll need to know how much you spend so you know how much you need for your needs and your wants. So how do we overcome this spending? We need to make our why more important than our spending habits. And let me say this again, we need to figure out what is it gonna take to make our why more important than our spending habits? Let me give you an example. My wife and I always wanted children. And after almost 10 years of marriage, we were finally blessed with our first child. But seeing the look on my wife's face, having to go back to work after her maternity leave was over and leaving that child we waited so long for because she had to go back to work. And let's admit it, San Diego is a very expensive place to live. That is what defined our why. So I'd encourage you to deep dig back in your financial history and, and your stories and find your why. What is going to empower you to change those habits? When we found out we were having a second child, now learning to live on one income so she could stay home with our children while they were little, that was more powerful than our habits, our image, or any financial need to keep up with any kind of activities. And that was our why. Next, dive into your why. So what does this look like? How did we do it? We went back to our budget, or better, our plan. We noticed how much we were spending in groceries and meals out. This was a huge way that we could transfer poor habits into powerful habits. I'll give you another example. So every Wednesday is trash day at our house. Why am I telling you this? Why is this important? Because it's my job, my habit, to clean up the refrigerator on Tuesdays then my wife will plan our meals, every meal for the whole week, based on what's left in our fridge, what we need to use, and what we need to buy at the grocery store. And then she takes our meal plan and she tapes it right there on the refrigerator. No excuses. It takes away the decision fatigue. We, come, we don't have to come home from work and saying, oh, I'm tired. What do you wanna eat? I don't know, I'm tired. What do you wanna eat? Does this sound familiar? Does anybody feel this? We look at that plan every single day and we say, okay, great. It, what's our plan? What are we having? Do we need to defrost something before we leave? And we have the meals ready to go. We rarely go out to dinner and spend money. And if we do, it's something special to look forward to. As you make your whys more important your habits, you dive into your whys, you'll develop your why and, and you'll get stronger and stronger with this every single day. Okay, the next part thing we see a lot when setting up unrealistic expectations um, is that setting goals that can't be met. So I often hear, I want to pay off all my credit card debt. I have $10,000 in credit card debt and I want to pay it off in one year. Very ambitious, great. Uh, and I, I want to help you do that. But let's talk about that. Do you have an extra $833 a month plus interest to pay that down without making any changes to your life? That's quite a bit of money to come up with. And we'll talk about what we can do. Number two is time frames. Oftentimes we see these time frames that uh, just aren't making sense. And it's nice to have a second pair of eyes come in and say, you know, I thought I, well, I could go accomplish this goal this fast and something came up and it pushed me back on my plan. Well, that's not a reason to throw away your plan. It's just, we just need to make one adjustment. Uh, here's an example. Uh, a teacher maybe wants to go on vacation in the summer, but they only get paid 10 months out of the year. How can they pay their bills? They still have to pay their mortgage and utility bills and their credit card payments and figure out how to take a vacation. And lastly is rigidity. Sometimes we're so set in our ways and our habits uh, become very powerful. So I want to talk about a couple ways we can take the rigidity and change it into a solution. 
So how do we overcome these things? We have this fantastic budgeting tool. If you want to work with us and schedule a meeting, it shows you in black and white whether you spend more than you bring every month or you spend less than you bring every month. We got to find a way to reduce your expenses, find every line we can, can use to reduce your expenses so we can become positive. Once we're positive every month and we're not spending as much as we're bringing in, now we know exactly how much we can afford to put in that savings account or that investment account or how much we can pay off debt. Here's that example. So we talked about that the person I met with who had $10,000 worth of credit card debt and they wanted to pay it off in one year. Well, we worked on their cash flow plan and we noticed that, okay, they save for they are positive $400 a month. So $800 a month is not going to work out. They're not going to be able to pay that debt off in one year, but they can pay it off in 25 months. And by having that hope out there, that plan out there, it gives you a lot more relief. Taking small steps, the teacher I talked about who wanted to take the summer vacation, her vacation was going to cost her about $2,000, but she didn't get paid in the summer. She only got paid for 10 months. So we figured out, okay, great. For this 10 months that we are working and we're getting paychecks, we need to set 200 that aside so that way you'll have the money, the $2,000 ready to go for your vacation. And lastly, changing habits takes time. I was working with another couple who they were adamant. They said, we're not going to spend any money on meals out. We're not going out. We're spending $600 a month and we're not doing that anymore. So I said, great, this is perfect. I'll help you. I'll give you phone calls. Let's track and we're going to meet again next month. Well, sure enough, we met again next month. And they said, oh, we spent $300 on meals out. But this month we are spending nothing. I said, okay, great. I support you. Let's track and meet again the following month. Sure enough, they spent $300 again. So spending zero money on meals out wasn't realistic to them. So we need to figure out, okay, being reducing from 600, 300 is realistic. And that's a great change. Where else can we make up that $300 in our plan? Well, let's talk about where we can make those. We can't do a lot about our fixed expenses. Those are the ones with the due dates. You know, those are your mortgage and your utility bills, the things we have to pay every month. But then you'll notice there's also things that you buy every month or every week that don't have due dates. Gas, groceries, meals out, fun. We tend to underestimate these expenses. Uh, this was, I learned this that last year with me. I have a, now my, my first child now was a first grader last year, and I had no idea how much uh, kids' activities were going to cost, winter camps and summer camps. It felt like every week the school was having a fundraiser, and I underestimated that category. So now what I've done is I've set up a certain savings account that goes for the kids' activities. Holidays is another big one. I mean, let's let's take a look at, after we get on this call, let's all take a look at our, our spending history. Well, a lot of us, I'm sure, don't want to, but take a look at what we spend the last 30 days on, on Christmas and on holidays. And it's not just the holidays. I mean, maybe Halloween, you have costumes and candy, uh, birthdays, retirement parties. We spend a lot more on holidays than we realize. So I deeply encourage you to go back, find out how much you're spending on holidays, those things close, and which categories we're underestimating our expenses. So what can we do? Again, groceries and meals out are the first place I would start. Those are the areas we all tend to underestimate and the easiest areas to fix. So track your groceries and your meals out for one pay period or one month and take a look at money ways you can save to uh, reduce those expenses. Again, we go grocery shopping once a month. I, I shared that story with you. We only go, I'm sorry, not once a month. We go grocery shopping once a week on Wednesdays. That's the only day we go. And we have our list ready to go so we know exactly how much we're going to spend. Open a savings account for the true emergencies. Um, understand your deductibles and, and the true emergencies. If I would ask you to give me an example of a true emergency, this isn't things like new tires to the car. We know tires don't last forever. We know their phones and our computers don't last forever. These are not true emergency. A car accident might be a true emergency or a medical um, 
issue might be a true, that would be an example of a true emergency. So let's have that money set aside for the true emergencies. Uh, I like to start with understanding what my deductibles are for insurance. So I know how much I need to come up with, making sure we have that money set aside first. And then from there, we can start with the savings accounts. And then know how much you're going to need to put into each category. We have something called uh, periodic expenses when you work with us one-on-one. -on -one. Again, they're talking about home repairs, auto repairs, vacations. These are the periodic expenses. We all know they're coming. We spend this money every year. We just need to know how much we actually spend by tracking. Okay. Challenge number four is not planning for the occasional expenses. Now, these are things that they can be expected or unexpected. They're not things that are part of our plan that we think about every month. They are things like um, a funeral. Um, there are things, uh, maybe a trip you have to take that was unexpected. These are the things that don't happen every day or even every month, but they definitely happen every year. Uh, DMV registration, that's a good one. We all pay our DMV registration every year. This is an occasional expense, not every month, but let's say our DMV reg registration is $240 a year. So we need to set aside that $20 a month from every paycheck so we have the money ready to go. AAA, all most of us pay it every year. Costco, most of, most of us pay it every year. So we need to set, think about the occasional expenses, figure out how much they are, and then figure out how much we need to set aside each month. One trick I do is I set up specific savings accounts. So I have four savings accounts. Uh, for some people have more, some people have less. I have one for auto repairs. I have one for vacation. And I have the new one I told you about, or the, the kids' holidays. And I have one for household maintenance. And I put a little bit aside. Actually, I'll tell you, I'll put $50 every paycheck. It might not sound like a lot, but at the end of the year, I have $1,200 sitting in those accounts. And boy, did that come in handy when I needed tires last month. So review your budget often. Like I said, I do mine every two weeks. Stay on track. If something comes up, make that adjustment. Now, the last one I want to talk about, and I told you I want to save this one for last, is lack of communication. This is a big one. This is probably the most painful one, and oftentimes where guilt and shame hide. This is where relationships can be severed and trust can be lost. So we need to learn to stand in our financial truths, or we're going to see the history repeat itself over and over again. If you have a partner that you or spouse that you share finances with, please let them know what's important to you. We do this fun kind of thing where I love meeting with, with families. And after about our third or fourth meeting, once we have our budget, we have our plan, we have a, a very good awareness of how much we spend every month. The next thing I do, I give them what's called uh, their, their own goals, their own what they want to accomplish separately. And I ask them to fill it out separately. I, I don't want them to look at what the other person's li looking at. And then we come together for the meeting and I want them each to share what they feel their pro financial priorities are. And they're never the same. And we need to give each other that. We need to give each other um, room to figure out what our financial dreams are and help each other to achieve that. In the same way, we need to share our, communicate with our friends. Maybe we have, friends who we go out with often, and we're afraid to tell them, hey, I really can't afford this. This is a financial hardship to go going out. Maybe we can come to my house and make dinner there, watch a movie there, something like that. So just being very honest uh, with your friends, letting them know where you stand financially, what you're planning on doing, extremely powerful. You won't have to have those, the shame conversations about, oh, I, I really don't, can't afford this, but I don't want to tell my friends no. Lastly is creditors, financial institutions. If you're in a place where you're struggling to even make the minimum payments and you're getting behind on the payments, please don't hide. Please don't feel the guilt and the shame. Call that number on the back of your statement. Call the number on the back of the credit card. Call, if it's with us, call Cal Coast, call your bank and let them know. Say, I'm going through this hardship. I've lost half my income, whatever your situation is, 
And there's all kinds of plans out there. Maybe they can reduce your interest for a period of time or reduce your minimum payment for a period of time until you can get back on your feet again. But please be honest with each other, honest with your friends and honest with your creditors and financial institutions. Uh, we're here to help. Again, many banks, credit unions have plans uh, and creative ways to help you overcome. So we talked about sharing your plan with others, sharing your goals, sharing your whys and staying in contact with creditors and let them know what's going on with your finances. Well, I wanna thank you for spending time with us today. We talked about the importance of setting up a budget and the importance of sticking to a budget and how we're gonna use our budget or our plan to achieve our financial goals. I wanna give you another resource. Uh, California Coast partners with a company called Enrich. It's a fantastic platform. You can go, you, you go to calcoastcu.org slash enrich. There's all kinds of tools, videos, courses, articles you can see. And it's not just budgeting. It's maybe it's retirement planning or it's student loans, or I wanna learn more about investments, all kinds of resources out there. So I encourage you to check it out, calcoastcu.org slash enrich. And then if you want to meet with our financial coaches individually, again, it's a free benefit of membership. Be happy to help you create a budget, help you stick to your plan. There's myself, Jevin Boyer, my phone number, my email address. And then Tara Lynn Rose, there's her direct phone number, and email address. And of course, the number for the credit union at the bottom, please reach out. And uh, we'd love to work with you. And with that, I'd like to turn the presentation back over to Will and Andres. Thanks, Jevin. Uh, wow, that's a lot of great information. We appreciate all that. Uh, the next step is to, to take action and to use it. Uh, so we have a few questions that we'd like to answer in the chat. Uh, the first question is, how do I schedule a meeting with someone to help me with budgeting? Perfect question. And I'll leave the screen up. I hope you can see it. There's my contact number, my direct phone number. We're the only departments who give our direct phone number out. We want people to reach out to us. We love, Taylor and I both love our jobs and anything we can do to help, we're here for you. Excellent, thanks, Jevin. Another question from a member. With interest rates going up, is there a downside to closing one of my credit cards? That's a great question. So one of the things we do is not just create a budget, but we have a service called a credit review. And what we do is we go through each one of your credit reports with you line by line, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. We teach you how to read them and we create basically a to-do list. So everything's in one spot for you and we help you identify what the priorities are. But your specific question was about, do I close my credit card? Well, I'm gonna tell you 15% of your credit score is based on your length of credit history. So if you're closing cards that you've had the longest, you're gonna lose all those years of great payment history. So I definitely encourage you not to close out anything <laughs> until you talk to us first, uh, but especially don't close out any credit cards, credit lines you've had the longest. Great, thanks, Jevin. Another question, uh, is it practical to refinance a car loan? It absolutely can be. So let's talk about this. Um, car loans are traditionally have a much lower interest rate because it's a secured loan. Uh, the loan is secured against the value of your vehicle. So for example, let's say you have equity in your car and you can get a car loan for 5%. Again, just making up that number. But now you have credit card with a high balance on it that you're paying 25% on. It would absolutely make sense to refinance the car, maybe even take some cash out if you have the equity and pay off that high interest debt. That's a great question. Jevin, uh, another question from the chat, from the Q&A. Do you help with small business financial coaching uh, for sole proprietors? So I don't do a lot of the small business. Uh, Terrell and I pretty much stick to um, families, individuals. Um, we do have a lot of great resources we can give you. Um, I can answer basic questions, but again, we... we we just don't have the capacity right now to, to answer <clears throat> and set up more business plans. It's just not really our specialty right now, but hopefully we can grow that in the future. Great. Uh, another question, what is the best resource for identifying programs for fixed income folks? Um, 
maybe someone who's recently retired. Perfect. Yes, there's all sorts of resources. Um, um, I think the, the best answer for that is you can go on the government website. Um, there's, there's several government websites we can use. If I can have that person uh, email us separately, I'll be happy to provide those resources, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions anybody have? Go ahead and put it in the Q&A. We do have a little bit of time. Okay. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Andres de la Mora. He's with our uh, uh, business development team. Uh, Andres, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Andres de la Mora, business development manager here at CalCoast Credit Union. I've inserted my info in the chat box. If you have any questions related to products or services, I'm here to help. Just contact me at any time. I think we have a question for you, Will, on when will this recording be available on YouTube? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're gonna try to have this up on YouTube uh, within a couple of days, but no longer than about a week. So keep an eye out for that. Jevin, another question for you. Any apps that you recommend? Well, I am one of those old fashioned guys who likes to uh, use paper and pencil, but now I've actually transitioned to my plan that I use every two weeks. And it is an Excel-based version. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple apps. Um, I know people like Mint. They like Expensify. There's a couple other ones. Um, I, I just don't do that as much because, again, I, I create my budget. I check on every two weeks, and that's pretty much all I need. So um, you know what? Let me go back, and I will share that previous slide because they were... Sorry about that. There you go. Uh, there's some uh, phone apps, some online apps. Um, if the person wants to go ahead and take a picture of this, we can send them the, the slide as well. And hopefully that's helpful. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions that anybody has? Andres, I have a question for you from the uh, Q and A. Uh, do do we offer first time home buyer assistance? I am looking up the answer right now. I know things have changed uh, in the real estate world right now, so give me one second. I will I will type that answer to that member. Thank you. Thank you. 